Everyone's favorite nonsensical, surely this will save the world tax, the carbon tax is back in the news as it's set to exceed $170 per ton when specifically promised that it would not exceed 50. So there's, there's two elements to this breakdown. There's the what just happened and how did the liberals do this and what is the carbon tax and why is it silly? So last year when Catherine McKenna and Justin Trudeau were asked point blank, Will the carbon tax exceed uh, $50 per ton? They said no. This was conservative scaremongering. The media jumped in and said the conservatives are lying scaremongers. Now, they have just announced that it will exceed $170 per ton by the year 2030 because, of course, the year 2030 is magic and all the international agreements say we must save the world by 2030. And if we don't, well, then the world will end just like it ended last year and the year before that and the decade before that and the decade before that. The world will literally end unless we put in a carbon tax because the World Economic Forum said so, or something. Just don't look into that too much science. So, the news comes when the liberals are actually at a very high approval standard. And it makes sense they would choose now to just totally say, you know what, screw it with all our promises. We're going to use this to just push it because we've just, vaccines are coming out. We still have all the COVID in the news cycle. So the liberals have calculated, and I think correctly here, that they can use the media as their own propaganda arm to help uh, mitigate the negative backlash from this massive hike to the carbon tax. Uh, this being that the media will just cover a lot of COVID, COVID, COVID vaccines. Um, they already have O'Toole on the, we're last in line for the vaccines when the third country to inject some with a vaccine. So with the liberals numbers going high, they can just cram a new tax down, call it green carbon environment plan, call it whatever they want to call it. Um, and then the media must love it because they called it green. So I think this makes a lot of sense because Justin Trudeau basically tested the media a couple months ago with the Wee scandal. He just prorogued Parliament for an entire month and said, you know what? The only people who are coming after me for the Wee scandal are the conservative opposition. I'll just shut down Parliament so they can't ask any more questions about it. We'll black out all the things. And the media will not any ask any questions about the Wee scandal in the month that, that we shut it down. Um, the media, the guardians of truth and light and democracy, actually didn't do any uh, journalism in that one month. Shocking, I know. Uh, everyone was shocked. Um, absolutely everyone except me and everyone else uh, was shocked. So this is where you have uh, basically collusion between the media and the Liberal Party, which has given them $600 million, to say, you know what, we know when we can put out things that are highly unpopular, we have a good approval, and, and the media will essentially uh, mitigate the, the disaster uh, of, of us massively increasing taxes. That will not work. Now, before we get into how these taxes will not work, why the carbon tax is stupid, why it won't save a single plant, and how it will destroy the economy, and it's basically just a, a, an attack on, on farmers and regular people. Uh, first, this video is sponsored by Battle Rhythm Beard Co. Um, they are a great company, and you might not, you might know about them. They are a group of Canadian veterans making beard care products, and you're thinking, hey, wait, why do they get your face to do a commercial for their product? Isn't your face slightly, can't really patchy there and the beard looks weird if I, it would just look a lot worse. But Battle Rhythm Beard Co. believes in your face because they have faces and you have faces and you don't need a beard, right? They have great skincare products, but this, this company is really good. We've looked at them. I mean, they're Canadian owned. All products are made in Canada. It's owned by Canadian veterans. All proceeds of, of every product brought does go to a veteran or first responder charity. Um, they do things the right way. Like none of these products are tested or, or contain animal byproducts. So like if you're a vegan, you can eat them. We don't recommend eating them. You'll probably get sick, but you can still feel morally superior if you do, if that's your thing. Um, yeah, so if you're looking for a great Christmas present and you want to support a Canadian company that employs Canadians, run by veterans, supports our first responders and veterans because our government probably doesn't, uh, this is the place for you. So I, I've gone to the website. Things are, it's really high quality stuff, um, actually quite reasonably priced. Um, so if you want to support a Canadian company doing things the right way, uh, go to Battle Rhythm Beard Co. And, you know, if you have, if you have a face or you know someone with a face, this is the place. Okay. The carbon tax. It will save the world. Save the world. We must save the world from pollution. Now, this is what I hate about the left and especially the environmentalist movement. It's the environmentalist movement and the left prioritize feeling good about the environment over doing things for the environment. That is what I'm alleging here. This is the carbon tax 101. It is just this nebulous feel good sounding thing that makes the liberal left and the upper middle class feel good. It makes us feel like we're doing something. We're recycling. We're better than the Americans. Donald Trump is bad. I am good carbon tax. Now, what does the carbon tax do in, in reality? 
um, it destroys farmers, it destroys the economy. Now, you want to think, hey, okay, we need to put a price on pollution. Well, pollution is actually energy here. We're talking about energy, okay? We have to use energy to go. The problem is, energy is a necessity. We cannot get off energy. You think, well, the, the sun and the wind. The, the wind power in, in Ontario, it's stupid. It's just fracking. Every kilowatt hour of, of, of energy produced by so a green green energy in Ontario has to be stored, which they can't do it, with one kilowatt hour of natural gas. So like, it, it, it doesn't even exist, okay, guys? Now, we're not gonna find perpetual motion and, and create the perfect system. So we're going to need actual fossil fuels. The way that the Americans reduced their carbon emissions is they, you know, took regulations off natural gas. And natural gas is more efficient than oil. Oil is more efficient than coal, right? And pollution is inefficiency. Second law of thermodynamics. So everyone who's gonna scream about science, second law of thermodynamics. You cannot transfer energy from one place to another without a loss in subsequent energy, okay? That loss is inefficiency or emissions or pollution, okay? And our global warming thing, this is the, this is the frustration with global warming, is there's real ecological problems, you know, ecosystems are collapsing, we have pollution, but instead we take all environmental problems everywhere, we conglomerate them into one thing, we call it global warming, and then we say global warming can be fixed by the single univariate analysis, which is carbon emissions. And it's ridiculous, it's anti-scientific, but we do it anyway. So when you put in a new carbon tax, what you're saying is, okay, we're going to increase the price on carbon, right? So everything's carbon, right? So essentially what you're saying is, okay, oil, natural gas, we just want to increase the price. Because if we increase the price of this, right, this is like a tax, right? When you increase the price of something, you disincentivize it. But don't worry, we're all getting rebates anyway as Canadian government citizens, so they're just going to give us all our money back, so it's not really taxing us. This is the silliness of it that if people believe. But the problem is, one, okay, we still need energy to move forward. Things still need to go from point A to point B, okay? We need to do that. And how do we grow food? Like, listen, humans eat food. Almost all humans eat food. Everyone doesn't. Unless you can do photosynthesis, you need the food, okay? And the way we grow food is purely, like not purely, but the way we farmers like need it is like they use energy, natural gas, oil, like to, to get crops, like it takes a lot of energy and thank God we have these great and efficient fossil fuels. They, they get food to us cheaper and actually greener. But now when you put this massive increase on the price of gas, right, then the massive price in food is going to go up. Now, people have to pay more for food. So the rebate you're getting is to rebate you for the increased amount of money you're allegedly paying at the gas pump. But in reality, what's actually happening is you actually have to pay a lot more money for literally everything because the price of everything you're eating goes up because the carbon taxes literally increase the price of food. It's also going to increase the price of everything and every product that has ever been transported from point A to point B. Because again, you need trucks or planes or ships or whatever to move product A from point A to point B. Moving that requires energy. You increase the cost of that energy, well then you're increasing the cost of that product. So you're getting a massive increase in this overall cost of living. But don't worry, you'll be rebated for it from the government. It's absolutely ridiculous. They will destroy royal com rural communities. And you're already seeing that in the farmers paying thousands and thousands of dollars in the carbon tax already. And what, you're going to increase it to uh, over like, what, 300, 400 times? It's killer. Like, and okay. But you're thinking, no, 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 it's to save the planet. We need to get off the energy. What's, what's the utility here? Like, what, what do you hope that happens here? What's the, what's the goal of the carbon tax? To increase the guy, ca cost of gas so much so that a middle-class family and a father with three kids has to, you know what, sell his car because he can't afford it. And now he has to buy a bike instead of a car, wake up two hours earlier to sort of bike to work because he can't afford the gas and then get home, you know, three hour, two hours later because he can't like get there quickly. So great, this father is now biking four hours a day and never sees his kids. But don't worry, we're saving the world because of the carbon tax because now he's biking around. It's so ridiculous because oil and natural gas are an absolute necessity. There is no way to substitute off it right now. So the fact that you're trying to disincentivize it without any actual legitimate substitutions is purely insane, unscientific. But you know what? We need to save the world because Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum say we must increase the carbon taxes. And again, Trudeau knows he can get away with it because instead of people explaining it to you for what it actually is. The CBC and its friends will call it a price on pollution. They will call it part of a green global climate action process. And as long as the left says something is green, you can never question it because green is whatever and conservatives are mean. And that's it for today.